Hi, all, and welcome to Monday Night's All Metal Mode podcast with Gypsy, myself, Amanda Digger DeGaz, and special guest, Butch Holcomb, founder and publisher of American Dirt. American Digger Magazine. So before we get started, just a couple announcements. Um, If you've checked out March's issue of Dirt Digest Magazine, definitely go check it out. Go to dirtdigestmagazine.com and click on current issue to read some great metal detecting stories. Uh, Let's see. Next up on allmetalmode.com. There is Mike Hare's new article on how to listen to all Metal Mode metal detecting podcast. So I'm sure everyone listening knows how to listen to us. But um, anyone that may have asked you how to check out the show, here's an online article you can share to help those who haven't checked it out and might want to. Um, I know I've been asked a couple times, you know, how do I get to the site? You know, can I sign up for chat? How do I listen? Um, and this this is a pretty good how-to. All right, now on to the show. Hey, Gypsy, how are you holding up? Hey, um, I am definitely, uh, I'm, I'm alive, I'm surviving. <laughs> uh, how That's, about you? Yeah, basically the same. <laughs> basically the same. Still working. It's been crazy. Yeah. Are you? Wow. Yep. Doing the work from home and um, trying to get out well I still can. <laughs> I'm sure we're all in that same boat. Right. It's kind of self-quarantining while you're, you know, getting out to the woods or the fields um, someplace kind of secluded where you can, you know, be away from people and still get out and do what you love to do. But I know you're having to deal with uh, the weather again. Y'all just had snow? Uh, Yeah, it's snowing right now. (laughs) We're getting supposedly (laughs) another 6 to 10. (laughs) So should be good. But, hey, it's supposed to be 50, so hopefully it will end up, um, well, once it piles up, it will melt over the next couple days. So. That's yeah. crazy. Well, it got, got to around 80 today here in Texas, and it's supposed to heat up and be almost, um, uh, let's see, almost 90 degrees, I think, by Wednesday. So uh, I'm probably going to get out and do some sweating. I may go to some of my local dumps and one of my local spots that I can metal detect along the river. It's only like five miles from me, so... Um, won't be going far, but someplace where I can kind of be secluded, no one around, and just do my thing. So hopefully. Uh, so you got to get out this week and do a little metal detecting. Was it yesterday, I believe? Uh, actually, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. <laughs> okay. I, I, yeah. I, took, I took the a long weekend of going to the fields and woods and dragged the, the guys out of the house, and that yeah, was good. Yeah, that's good. What would you find? Uh, not much. No, nothing really. I mean, lead bale seal, buttons, spoons, nah, the basics. <laughs> Tell me about that lead bale seal, because I think I found a lead bale seal the day before you found yours, so that was pretty cool. <laughs> I, I haven't cleaned it up yet, so <laughs> it's still sitting really? in a bag of dirt. Yeah, um, I think it's <laughs> S&O Co., um, but I'm not. I'm not sure. Cool. I know it looks good, or it looked good when I got it out of the dirt. But um, yeah, how about yours? Well, mine. I barely rinse. All I did was rinse it off um, under the sink just to get the dirt off. And from what I can tell, there's like a Texas star on it, and I think it says Texas. And then on the back side, or one side, it looks like it may have. Part of the number, it looks like 64, but I, I'm not for sure on that. But definitely has a star and, and the word Texas and then some other writing that that um, is kind of part of the back, part of the seal that's not there anymore. So I probably won't ever be able to tell exactly what. But a cool find for me. I was excited. Yeah, um, that's, that's awesome. Well... Let's, uh... So, yeah, 
I got my uh, video uploaded, if anyone's interested. Uh, I just got it uploaded yesterday that has that and some other finds that we found. And, and uh, one Civil War <clears throat> find that was found by um, Dennis that um, was uh, there uh, with us, uh, Mike here and I from All Middle Mode Podcast. Uh, so it was Mike and Dennis and I hunting this property, uh, but a lot of historical um, background. So if you're interested, just go to uh, Zero Discrimination and uh, check out the new video. So how about we go ahead and bring in our guest, our special guest this evening. Um, you want to go ahead and do the honors? Yeah. All right, all. Uh, we have our special guest, Butch Holcomb which is the founder of American Dirt Digger Magazine, and we are so excited to have you on. Welcome to the show. Well, hello. For first time caller, long time listener. I appreciate you having me on tonight. <laughs> well, we're, we are honored. We're so happy to have you on, and it's always an honor to have uh, someone like you that has so much experience and and started a magazine and a podcast and all kinds of good <laughs> stuff. So we're going to be excited to uh, have you on. Um, unfortunately, I've never had the honor of getting to meet you yet. But um, Amanda, have you? I have not, sadly. <laughs> no, I don't think I don't think I've met either one of you. And um, sooner or later, I will. You know, we get around well, to very events and um, and. We've added, uh, we actually do two, two uh, shows a year now, too, so maybe, um, you know, one's in Chattanooga and one's in South Carolina. That's a long way for both of you. But regardless, maybe one day we can swing a call together. Yeah, that, that would be, be awesome. Yeah, I was hoping to make it to the Chattanooga show, but... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, um, it's still on for this year, uh, but, you know, like everything else, it's being taken one day at a time, and... Um, now that you speak of that, too, there were a lot of the events that have been canceled for a March and even into April. So anybody that's you know planning to go to any should check into them. Yeah, yeah, it's sad. Uh, Garrett had to cancel their yeah. Garrett, well, not not cancel, but postpone postpone till they can plan another time. But uh, and that's really what sad. they all are is postponed. I think at this point, um. So right. we were even going to have um, American Digger Day at a couple of the hunts coming up, and those got canceled, too, so or postponed. So we will uh, be right along with it, and when they bring them back, we'll be there. Awesome. We'll be epic digging uh, after. <laughs> right. Well, um, even Amanda and I have a little trip planned in um, – May and we're just kind of hanging in there, hoping hoping it's going to happen. Well, so we we'll just you, yep, we just have to see. But you know, one thing we can still do, as long as we keep our social distances, is um, there's no reason you can't go to an old permission and um and go metal detecting. So it's a good time to Very do that, true. especially you know. Um, the somebody asked me about door knocking. I said I don't think right now is the time to door knock. So go to permissions that you've already got. Yeah, I you know, agree. Try right. that. I agree. totally agree there. Shouldn't be. Yeah. I, I feel bad. Like, I don't want to invade, you know. I thought no. about making a poster board that says, I don't have. <laughs> but you don't <laughs> know if work. you do or don't. So it doesn't really matter. <laughs> oh, I need a sock. Please give. <laughs> yeah. All right. Oh well, well, you know, talking talking about permissions and all that that actually reminds me of a of a story here that uh, I guess I could go ahead and tell it. But actually, I wrote yeah, a book sure. years ago called Never Makes a Skunk, and then another one called Never Makes a Skunk too. And the people that have read them, obviously, right now, are rolling their eyes. But hey, you bought them and you read them constantly. You tell me. So um, this actually um, this happened to a friend of mine. And myself up in North Georgia, we were at um had actually located a really cool site that was used by the black troops during the Civil War, and to me that's just really exciting because you had guys that were really you know fighting for their freedom with that. And so we went up and we knocked on this lady's trailer, 
in this big area woods up there, dead end road up at the trailer. She said, sure, go right ahead, metal detect. So we went in there, and we found a trash pit. And, I mean, it was a huge trash pit. We were going in there every weekend, Saturday and Sunday, and we weren't even filling the pit back in because she had given us full permission. So finally, mm-hmm. we were getting down to the really good stuff, and we went up there and parked at her trailer, as we used to do, waved our hand at her, went out in the woods, and the pit had been covered up. Now, that's kind of a weird thing, because we'd been leaving it open. So I looked at Eric, or Eric looked at me, and about that time, we both looked at the real property owner who had just walked up through the woods. And we told him we told him the situation. He wasn't nice at first and they started laughing. He said that's he said, That's Miss Jones. She's crazy as a bat. She thinks she owns this whole mountain. She doesn't even own that trailer, she rents it. So we asked him if we could come back and he said, No, nah, I think you better not. So we never went back. So always be sure of your permissions. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> you talk about a creepy feeling. And when we left, I didn't say anything to the woman in the trailer. I saw her looking out the window, and I'm like, let's get out of here. So. Wow. Oh, man, and you just never know. <laughs> no, you don't. You really don't. <laughs> oh, but that's that's the trick nowadays is um. If, you know, you got to swallow your pride and go knock on some doors, and, well, that's what you've always had to do, but especially now, when all the big areas of woods and stuff are gone, um, just go knock on doors. Yeah, I'll be glad when all this stuff is over, so. Yeah, yeah, right now, right now, you really can't, and, um, I mean, it's, uh, you know, it hasn't affected the hobby directly yet other than the events, but it's going to affect it pretty soon because you got to have gas to get out to go metal detecting, and if you're without a job, it's going to be hard to do that. So, um, you know, I wish everybody well during this time. Right. Um, so let's get into, if you don't mind, uh, mm-hmm, for, sure. for those those of you... Those of our guests that don't know you uh, that well, I'm, I'm sure all of our guests probably already know uh, and know more about you, probably even more than than. Well, they've uh, seen me on America's I. Most Wanted. You know, they've seen me on America's <laughs> Most Wanted. There you go. <laughs> but usually my face is blurred out, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, but for those of our guests that may not know you, um, as well you've been metal detecting for 52 years is that correct 52 years you believe that um our videographer for the magazine in fact our last two videographers um riley bright and also Britton lockhart they, if you put their ages together it still wasn't as much as i had metal detected <laughs> so wow. yeah 52 years i people say do you still do it oh yeah i go out every chance i can <laughs> always will i love it <laughs> That is and, awesome. Well, Riley, yeah. Riley's in our chat tonight. Um, oh, he is. Hey, so, Riley. Yeah. I will say one thing. Even 52 years ago, I don't think I ever dug as much as Riley dug for the last three days. So, wow. Riley, I got to catch up with you on that. That's a record. Yeah. Some epic <laughs> finds. Yeah. Uh, some of those posts, there are epic. So tell us, Butch, if you don't mind, um, kind of what got you interested or started, or was there someone in your life that kind of said, hey, you know, how did you get started? Well, sort of um, the first interest I ever had in history, per se, was I think I was about six or seven years old. I was with my uncle on his farm, and I found an arrowhead. And he explained to Uh me what it was and all, and so I was kind of hooked on that. And then uh, a little while after that, I used to be real big into going fishing when I was when I was a kid. And um, I looked at the guy's tackle box, and I don't know, I'm guessing at my age here, probably 10 years old, something like that. And he had these Civil War mini balls in there, and I knew what they were because the centennial had happened down here. You know, everybody knew what a mini ball was. And I um. said, I said, where did you get those mini balls? He said, I don't have any mini balls. Those are fishing sinkers. 
So I bought all that he had for a quarter. I got a head full of Civil War mini balls for a quarter from him. <laughs> and he still thought they were fishing sinkers. And so wow. after that, shortly after that, in fact, one of the local icons down here, Dent Myers in Kennesaw, I think some of the listeners will know who he is. A lot of them won't. But he was one of the first metal detectorists of note here in Georgia, and he actually started in the early 60s and actually had a metal detector that had a battery that went on your back in a backpack, if you can imagine that. And he came by my grandmother's house one day and um, said he wanted to go metal detecting. Well, I was out there bothering my grandmother, and she said, yeah, you can go if you take my grandson with you. So here I am trailing behind this guy with this huge metal detector. I don't even remember what we found but I do remember at that time, I said, i got to have a metal detector. And so my dad <laughs> bought me one. A year or two later, he bought me one, and um, it was a put-together kit. And um, it had to show you, okay, anybody that metal detects will understand this is probably not a good idea. The rod that screwed directly into the search coil was made out of chrome steel. So you couldn't tune the <laughs> rod out. <laughs> it was oh pretty. It looked really cool. But I managed to find a few things with that. But uh, probably about yes. 1970, I got a white smell detector, and my whole world changed then. And, um, <laughs> wow. And I still go as much as I can. Yeah. Um, but back then, I would go every day, Saturday and Sunday, from sun up till sundown. I would keep my metal detector in the car. I would go on the way home from work when there was enough daylight. And there was a time or two I actually got into a site that was so good that um, <clears throat> I called in sick to work. So I was pretty close <laughs> to the whole thing, you, you know. <laughs> That's funny. Do you happen to remember what wife machine you were using then? Was oh, it like my the gosh, yes, it was. Or before that? I believe it was a Coin Master. Coin Master 4, I think. It was a Coin okay. Master. The awesome. box on it was, was big enough that I could actually put snacks into the box along with the battery. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I love it. And, and it worked technology. good. It worked really good, yeah. Oh, those are good machines, yeah. Oh, yeah. I even owned one of those at one time. Um, or one of the Coin Masters, the, blue, the metal blue box. Oh, they're they're then, um, yeah, they're good machines. They they will still hold their own somewhat. Of course, there's a lot of detectors that pass them by leaps and bounds now. But um, you know, they had their place for sure. Oh, definitely. So, um, jumping forward now, um, mm-hmm. what what detectors are you using currently? Oh wow, um, my go to field detector would be a XP Deus. Uh, I've got a F-75 that I really like to use in trashy areas. I've got it set up with a little bit cool. I've got an AT Pro, Garrett AT Pro, that I like to use for my water hunting. And um, I've got a GPX that I also use. At this time, I don't own a Whites. And I don't own a Notka. They've recently started advertising our magazine, and they sent me one to test. So I'm going to add a, a Notka to my arsenal pretty soon, awesome. too. So when people say, well, what detector do you detect with, I go, all of them. Right. It's a, it's a right. We had a guest on not too long ago, and he was saying, uh, and I love what he said. He said, uh, you know, Steve, uh, the Zulik. Oh, yeah, he was a columnist with us for a while, yeah. He's an awesome guy, and he I love what he said, and I used it the other day. I was at a at the Garrett booth and at the TADMC uh, event mm-hmm. before all this quarantine stuff happened, and um, I, I used it to explain to somebody, you know, it's kind of like a golfer, you know, you need That's right, you can't win a game with one teams. club. <laughs> right. <laughs> And I don't know if you know this, but Amanda is one of the White's new field team uh, members. I did not know that. Oh, on there with Dave Wise and a couple other people I know. Uh Uh-huh. So I just wanted to mention that in case you didn't know. I I didn't. um, I know uh, Dave's on it. Um, I think Sergeant Whitey's on it now, too. Yep. 
Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, it's great. It's great the way these manufacturers are assembling field teams now, because when I grew up in this, this was kind of a solitary hobby, and um, you didn't hear the word teams much as far as manufacturers. You know, you just had people that used a white, right. used a Garrett, et cetera. But what they're doing now is really a good thing. I think it is too. I really do. Um, so. Um, I know Amanda's got a few questions for you, so I'm going to go ahead and throw it over to her for a moment. Um, Yeah, so I guess obviously you were talking about door knocking and whatnot, but what are your favorite Mm -hmm. areas to metal detect? Oh, well, um, if I've got a choice, my favorite place to metal detect is deep in a hardwood patch with, you know, just me and maybe another detector buddy in nature out there. It's getting hard to find sites like that, and they're nowadays are not as productive. So, if it's as far as what's my ideal place that I know is going to be productive or I think is going to be productive, that is actually knocking on people's doors and hunting in their yards around historical areas. Because somebody said to me one time, "Well, you can't." Um, hunt Kennesaw Mountain, which is a national park here in Georgia. You can't hunt Kennesaw Mountain because that's a felony. I said, no, you can't. I said, but people live right up to that property line, and you can hunt their property if they'll let you. And I have done very well with that. Um, of course, Riley's caught on to it now, and um, and several of the <laughs> other young kids especially. And by the way, if you want the greatest success rate door knocking, take a teenager with you or even younger. Nobody says no to a kid that's interested in history. <laughs> right. <laughs> so that's one of my tricks. I'm going to tell everyone right now. Take a kid. Right. Yeah, that they're not inside and, on the, the gaming box. Instead, they're outside. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I, I, um, found, I was hunting with one, one of the young guns, as I call him, one time, and it turns out he may have told a little fib to the guy that we were hunting with because I'm, I have no relation to him at all. We were just friends. And I was out there hunting in the backyard after he had got permission, and the owner came over and talked to me for a minute. He says, well, sir, I want you to know, you sure have got a nice grandson. And I kind of choked <laughs> on my water and said, oh, yeah, he's a good one. <laughs> but That's it worked. Funny. <laughs> oh. And, you know, um, something else that actually figures into that same trip, because when the homeowner came out there, I was along a fence line. Here's another trick. I'm going to give away all my secrets tonight. <laughs> The yard had actually been hunted before. I went over to the fence line, though, and actually the wire was all laying on the ground. I picked up all the wire and moved it off, and I was digging things where the wire was because everybody else was too lazy to do that. So, you know, you got to do what you got to do if you want to dig stuff. Right. <laughs> That's all the secrets I'm giving for now, though. Sorry. <laughs> That's all you're giving for now. <laughs> well, I like what you said, though, about the historical sites. Um, mm-hmm. I did that this summer, uh, this past summer, um, which I didn't find that much, but still it was fun getting the hunt near. Um, there's a old, old Civil War fort, uh, mm-hmm. Fort Bel- Belknap in Texas, and we have had a family reunion there forever, and uh, I got to uh, talking to my cousin, and he he said, "Hey, you know, my daughter and her husband just moved in right down from the fort. It's about, you know, just right up the road from there. And if you want to go hunt that property, you can." And uh, I ended up finding a really cool bell, brass bell there, but. Um, yeah. I'm sure a lot of those adjacent properties have been hit hard, but it was still nice, you know, getting permission and finding something that was Oh, yeah, it, it always is. And and when you're close to a site like that, you know there's the potential of something old and good. Right. There. It's some exactly. kind of a proximity thing. Yeah, you're, you're, clo- you're that close to it, something's got to be there. Exactly. And you so, know the... Um, um, uh-huh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, you go for it. 
No, I was <laughs> I was just going to say um the old timers, the people that were hunting when I was growing up and um, when I first started hunting, it never occurred to us to want to dig around the house. We would ask for permission, and then we would go to the furthest end of the property. It was just some kind of thinking of, oh, no, you want to be away from all the houses. And yeah. it's turning out that now the houses, a lot of them, at least here in Georgia, have not been hit nearly as hard as the woods. That's something to think uh, about. Right, definitely. You're giving away Especially more trips. the yard. <laughs> Go ahead. I said you're giving, <laughs> giving away more trips, uh, tricks and tips. <laughs> more tips, yeah. Um, so, uh, Butch... Go ahead and tell us, um, you know, uh, more about the magazine and and how yeah. that came about, and then maybe how your podcast came about, all that good stuff. Sure. Um, well, I love the hobby so much. I mean, from when I first started, I just, the whole time I was thinking, I've got to do something involved with the hobby. Um, I'll, I got to the point, I want to make a living on the hobby, but... Like so many detectorists, I wasn't going to sell what I found. I never sell what I find because it's just too hard for me to find. Right. You know, it's okay if you want to, but um, uh, making money that way was not an option. And um, so I had been freelance writing for um, Western Eastern Treasures and several of the other magazines for quite a while and, um, you know, picking up a little bit of money here and there, comp copies, et cetera. And after one trip to one of the magazines that I wrote for, I, I never had been there, and I called him up, and I said, hey, I'm up here. I was actually doing some book signings in Virginia, and I said, I'm up here. I would like to stop by your offices. They said, oh, yeah, yeah, that's no problem. Give me a minute. And I'm like, that's weird for a, a office and building to say. So they gave me the address, and I drove up there, and um, here's this old Victorian house, and it turns out they're running this national magazine out of their living room with two computers. And I'm like, oh. And I looked at my, my um, fiance at the time, Anita, and she went, oh. And we thought to ourselves, we can do this. And so um, on the way home, we came up with the name American Digger and had no idea how to run a magazine. All I knew how to do was to write a story. And um, <laughs> we, <laughs> we it, luckily, I had already built up a pretty good reputation because um, we put out, we didn't have the money to do a magazine either, but we put out a bunch of incentives to people, and before the first issue even came out, we had 500 subscribers. And wow. that paid for the printing, um, and then from there it just it grew. But uh, it, that's, you know, it was a matter of, if I look back on it now and say, oh, I'm going to start a magazine, I'd be thinking, I'm crazy. But I guess I didn't know enough about it at the time, so I just proceeded full steam ahead, and by God, it worked. That's yeah, the best way we're to still do it. Sixteen it? years later, yeah, sixteen right. years later. Well, people ask, do I write the the stories in the magazine? No, I write the column, which is in the back, which a lot of people enjoy reading about, bless their hearts. But I write the column in the back. But as far as the articles themselves. Most of those are written by freelance writers in the metal tech community, people you see all the time on Facebook. And um, uh -huh. we actually have a contest each year we've started that's a contest for people that write and submit articles to America Digger Magazine. And um, they can, well, first prize is 300 bucks and a bunch of swag. So, you know, wow. if you want to get involved and make a little money in the metal detecting world, too, um get with us, get our readers, our writer's guidelines, and write us an article. And by the way, you don't have to be a Rhodes Scholar to write for American Digger Magazine. The main thing is, have you got a good story to tell about metal detecting or finding old stuff? Um, do you think people would be interested in it? Can you come up with enough words and pictures? And if you can do all that, send it to us, and we'll work with you and um, end up making it something you'll really be proud of. That's awesome. Um, yeah. And I love how, and I'm sure y'all have added new things and different tried different things over the years, things that work. Oh, yeah. And, but that, that sounds like a really good idea uh, with that contest. I really like that idea. Oh, yeah, it's idea. great. It's, um, yeah, we always, we always have plenty of good submissions coming in because of that. Um, we've had some great columnists with the magazine. Steve Zizek 
that you, I'm sorry, Steve, I know I mispronounced your name, but um, no, Steve wrote a water column for a couple of years for us, and then um, he's moved on to um, pursue his own diving adventures and all. But, um, you know, that that's quality right there. Anybody that knows Steve knows that was a reason to look at the magazine right there. Right. He's an outstanding guy. Had the privilege mm-hmm. of getting to meet him in Vegas um, at the SHOT Show uh, when I was there with Garrett uh, this recently, a few months ago, I guess that's when that was. <laughs> I can't even mm-hmm. keep track of time now. That's about but, right. Yeah. I just really enjoyed getting to meet him, and, and then we had him on um, the podcast not long after that. <clears throat> and he sent me uh, his uh, book, and uh, oh, yeah. I haven't read. had a chance to read it all yet, but I did start it. I got that much going. Oh, it's good. <laughs> it's good. And by the way, I'm going to throw out another plug here. Um, Since this this uh, lockdown situation is happening with so many people, American Digger uh-huh. keeps a full selection of books, including Steve's. So anybody that's looking for books to read, um, go to AmericanDigger.com, get our number off there, call us up, and we'll tell you what we got. We got a lot of them. Awesome. Well, yeah. Uh, with that, with that said about the books, could you tell us about your books and and uh, where we can find those uh, to order those? Um, on, is that on the magazine uh, website? Uh, well, the um, the books, the actually yes, the ones that are not sold out are on the magazine website. Um, what it is is I've actually authored a few books. I've authored Never Mace a Skunk One and Never Mace a Skunk Two and um seems like I'm forgetting one. But anyway, I also have published and um and edited books for um Bill Dancy. I edited his colonial book, which I am proud to say that book was the fastest selling relic book that's ever been out. It sold a thousand wow. copies, a thousand copies in three months, and it is out of print now. And it's high dollar if you could find it. So I'm glad to have my name on that one. And um, wow. there's Coastal Empire. Uh, what? I know I should know the name of the books, but they kind of run together for a while. Uh, <laughs> right. Coastal Empire, Coastal em- Relics of the Coastal Empire. Excuse me, which is about artifacts from um, from South Carolina and Georgia. I actually published that for a club and um and did the editing on that. So I also do books, you know, that don't necessarily have me as the author, but I had a big hand in them and I I love them all. It's my children. But you can get any of those books from us at American Digger if they're not sold out. Never Mace okay. Skunk One is sold out and it's a hard one to get. So okay. but it you will laugh. If you ever read it you'll just laugh until you <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I've had some crazy things happen to me, and that's what those books are about. Well, that's that's what makes life fun, right? <laughs> oh, oh, it is. Um, it is, and it tells you what to dodge too. I'm gonna tell you another really quick one here. Um, I was metal detecting actually at the edge of a subdivision, and it was in the flight path of Dobbins Air Force Base. So I'm out there metal detecting in the woods. I, I get kind of a I get a huge signal, and I see something sticking out of the leaves, so I kick it. It's about two feet of an airplane wing. It what? was a hinged airlon or flap, whatever you call them, that came off of a military aircraft and landed right in the middle of the subdivision, and it had a number on it, like a part number. So I actually oh. wrote a letter to the... Um, to somebody in the government, Dobbins or whoever, whatever handles that situation. And I never heard back from them. But to this day, I've got that piece of an airplane sitting there going, you know, black vans could pull up at any time and take this <laughs> aircraft piece and me too. <laughs> but what do you do with it? But, you know, it, how'd it fall off an airplane? So anyway. Yeah. That's who cool, knows? Though. Yeah, oh, wow. it's very cool. I'm kind of proud of it. I would be. Then. Yeah. <laughs> so, Amanda, I know you've got some more questions for him. Well, we I'll did have a talk. question um, in the chat. Um, what, okay. Butch, what magazine 
did you visit that that they were doing in their living room? That was North South Trader, which is a great Civil War magazine. It's not all metal detecting, but it's North South Trader's Civil War magazine. All right. Nice guess, Bill. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and I did a lot of writing for them for quite a while. In fact, they edited my first book, which I owe a lot to them for doing that. Wow. And you also said you wrote uh, for Western and Eastern Treasures. Right, right. I wrote quite quite a bit for um, Steve and Rosemary over there at Western Eastern Treasures. I probably and, even read some of your articles and didn't even know it then. Cause yeah, probably I, so. <laughs> <laughs> for, oh. I've been metal detecting now 21 years, and so uh, that's how I kind of, you know, back then, you know, 21 years ago, we didn't have you know, the internet like we do no. now and YouTube and all that. So it was all books and, and magazines for me, you know, learning the hobby and, and learning more about it and what's out there. So Right. It's um and you know, I still recommend um books and, and especially the old magazines. You can learn so much from those and you can usually pick them up on eBay or at swap meets or whatever. For pennies on the dollar. I mean, I bought Western right. Eastern Treasures for 50 cents a piece plenty of times at some of the shows. So, um, you know, it's there's important information on there. And, yes, some of it gets on the Internet, and some of it doesn't. So it, it's good to have a backup with it. And i tell you something else that, that bothers me about the Internet. I am so glad we got it. But on the Internet... Anyone that wants to call them an expert can be an expert. And you see this in a lot of the groups. Oh, no, it's this. Oh, no, it's that. No, you didn't dig that. The patina isn't right. You didn't do this. You didn't do that. And I'm sitting here with 52 years' experience looking at them going, what kind of drugs are you on? (laughs) You know, because it's it's obviously not a such and such. And um, I've seen things with all kinds of patina coming out of the ground, so... I don't know. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, but but overall, the Internet has been a tremendous help for us. And I tell you what, as far as researching, it's the best research tool that's ever come around. That is so true. Yep. So true. So much information available right at our fingertips. And, uh, yes. And, um, and the part you just got to remember, is the information correct or not? And um, what I suggest people do is if you're going to Google something, don't just Google one source. Read several sources and then kind of use your your head on it, your common sense. Right. So um, is there, uh, I'm going to kind of change subjects here to, uh, you know, that question that all of us get asked over and over again is detectorist, you know, uh, maybe uh, what's your favorite find or, that you've ever found, or maybe, I mean, it may be your favorite find, maybe your best relic, maybe your, mm-hmm. you know, that could vary. There could be several. Uh, do you mind oh, sharing yeah. some of those with us? I, I wouldn't mind at all. Um, as far as Civil War relics, my, excuse me, okay, as far as Civil War relics, my best Relic, most expensive. Like I say, I don't sell stuff, but I still, you know, have values for insurance purposes. The first belt buckle I ever found about six months after I started metal detecting was a Georgia state seal buckle. And Whoa, it was one really? one of 1,000 made of that particular style. So, you know, oh, when you're yeah. talking about a rare coin where there's, you know, uh, 70,000 minted or something, compare that to 1,000. That's how rare it is. So in terms of value, that, and it's, you know, I, I hate to put values on things, but it's probably about six to $8,000 because it's in very good condition, too. But the most interesting Civil War relic I ever found, I found an identification tag of a Union soldier, and um, he was, I, I got his records, and he was listed as a deserter. So long story short, after looking wow. at his records, I did an Internet search on his name. His name uh-huh. didn't come up, but his father's name came up constantly, and his father was an important political figure in Hartford, Connecticut. And after they charged his son with desertion, 
he went back and pulled some kind of political strings, and they dropped all the charges against the guy. So it's kind of an identification tag with a little bit of politics involved. And let's don't just talk about Civil War relics, though. Let's talk about jewelry, because um, I was hunting in Augusta, Georgia. Now, anybody that knows music, which I love music, too, knows or can find out that in Augusta, Georgia, that was the hometown of James Brown, the soul singer. And um, anyway, James was known for some very flashy stuff. And I was actually metal detecting in basically what was a row of old crack houses in the neighborhood he grew up in. And I found a ring that, even though it probably isn't his, I call it the ring of James Brown. Because here in this crack neighborhood, I found a 14 diamond gold ring that was gold and white gold intertwined. And it, it feels like it weighs about half a pound. I never had a praise, but I want to. But I call that the ring of James Brown, even though it probably had nothing to do with him. So, um, you know, I, but the funny thing was, I was actually looking for Civil War relics when I found that. So I guess it doesn't count. Now, some people also ask me the oldest coin, and, and the guys over across the pond listening to this going to laugh at me. But it was still pretty cool, I think. I found um, in Savannah a 1673, I believe it was, hammered peso, or not peso, but um, real in Savannah, wow. Georgia, at a slave quarters, no less. So that was pretty cool, too. Yeah. But that's the oldest coin I've ever gotten. Wow. Yeah, I, I don't concentrate on coins, but I sure do love them when I dig them up. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's right. Uh, so your favorite thing to find, though, is definitely the relics, the Civil War relics. Well, it it is because, okay. and I think it's because of where I grew up and, um, you know, right. the, the historical atmosphere here in Georgia and all. Um, I love, the one thing I absolutely love, and I don't get to do it enough, is cellar hole hunting. And when it, we don't have cellar holes here in the South because there was no need for them. But when I go up and visit any friends up in Massachusetts or Connecticut, they know where I want to go, and that's to a cellar hole. <laughs> right. I, love uh, I love we metal don't have them where either. I can see something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, that's why I'm ready to head north. Uh, oh, yeah. Where uh, Mando. Amanda lives, uh, she gets to hunt those colonial sites. There's just not any colonial sites here where, you know, where I live in Texas. No. And, you know, you tend to you tend to specialize in the stuff that's near where you live. I mean, you still enjoy going out and, you know, going to other places. But, you know, I, I know mostly about Civil War relics. But I tell you, since starting the magazine, I have learned so much because everything that's sent to the magazine – we try to research it, and we have a very small staff. It's me, my wife, and three or four other people that are connected by Internet. And um, uh-huh. we can't just, you know, if someone sends us a picture of something and says this is a so-and-so and it's worth such-and-such, I can't print that without doing some background checking on it. Right. So I have right. learned so much by doing that, um, you know, that the magazine yeah. has made my knowledge a lot better than I thought it'd ever be. <laughs> and you know you can't really put a price on things anymore no. um because the price the price is totally dependent on how bad you want to sell it and how bad someone wants exactly. to buy it exactly how bad somebody uh-huh. wants to buy it and that's and right you can throw the books scarcity. away right so true because to the right corrector collector it, it it may be priceless so you just never know oh yeah um, absolutely don't throw anything away. That's something I tell everybody because, um, you know, you, if you don't know what it is, um, you're going to find out eventually, and you might regret throwing it away because there's a collector for everything. I've heard that about. Uh, I've heard people that have th- supposedly, you know, thrown away kettle points because they thought it was trash. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, that's that's right. Uh, exactly. Uh, Let's see. So if you could detect anywhere around the world, anywhere, anytime, any place, no laws or restrictions, where would you detect? Without a doubt, the White House lawn. 
because I think how much oh. history has been right at the White House. Um, you know, and if a, if a president ever runs that says he's a metal detectorist, he's got my vote. <laughs> Because I want to see right? somebody hunt. If I can't do it, I want to see somebody else metal detect the White House long. That's so funny. Because can you imagine the history? Yeah. <laughs> right? That's so funny that you said that. Because it doesn't matter what what I'm watching. But, I mean, I'm sure you all do this, too. But I'll be even <laughs> watching a movie that shows some old cabin out in the middle of nowhere. And I'm going, ooh. I want to detect That's that. right. <laughs> but it's the same thing when I see the White House and I look at that lawn and I'm like, oh, don't that, you wonder what's there? <laughs> that is the sign of a true metal detectorist. And another sign of a true metal detectorist is, in my case, I've lived in this city most of my life. But if I give directions to somebody, it'll be something along the lines of, okay, go to the end of the road where Glenn found that U.S. belt buckle and then take the right <laughs> down to where all those mini balls were. And then to the left, that's where I found the um, the seated Liberty coin. And then go straight from there. What's the road I, names? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. That's so true. Yes. Oh. This ain't my first rodeo. I've been around this hobby so long. I've noticed a lot of things other people don't. Oh, I love it. So um, I'm curious, um, and I'm sure Amanda is too, do you have a bucket lister or a white whale, oh something yes. that you <laughs> that or maybe oh, yes. more than one item? <laughs> don't no, it's, that if you don't it's one item. Um, we actually have a contest in our magazine each month. If any of the readers are on the chat line, I'm sure they can tell you right away what my bucket list item is. That is a gold coin. I've never found a gold coin, um, found plenty of gold jewelry. And so what we do in each issue of the magazine, we hide a picture of a gold coin in there somewhere. And whoever finds ah. it wins a prize for that issue. And that contest, when I finally find a gold coin, and one day I will, when I finally find one, that contest will change. But not oh, until then. But that is my bucket then. list. Uh, so uh, if you don't mind, tell us. Um, I know we're running out of time because you've got to mm -hmm. jump on and, uh, your podcast. Yeah, uh, it's all about podcasts mind? tonight. Right, it is. So do you mind telling our listeners um, – how they can um, subscribe uh, to your magazine, etc. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, uh, the easiest way to do it is go to americandigger dot com. That, of course, is our website. And um, I'm not sure which tab you go under, but I think you can figure it out. But um, you can buy subscriptions, or you can buy individual copies too. And it can be either digital or print, whichever you want. We we offer both. And um, if you want to get a little more personal with us, though, you can call us anytime Monday through Saturday, or not anytime, but till six o'clock, at uh, seven seven zero three six two eight six seven one. Or you can also email Anita A N I T A at AmericanDigger dot com, and she can tell you more about it. And I tell awesome. you what, if anybody out there is just curious about what we're about, get in touch with us, and we'll send you a free sample issue. No strings attached. Yeah, I think your newest All issue right. just actually got here. Perfect time for uh, having to lay low for a little <laughs> while. What's right. that? Uh, the newest issue just got here? Yes, yes. So um, everyone can um, can uh, self-isolate in... Um, in relic joy right now. <laughs> <laughs> that was one it. fellow that posted on Facebook, and God bless him, I appreciate his patronage, but he had just bought a bunch of books from us. He had a picture of himself posted back in his lounge chair saying that he had the quarantine under control because he had some books. So <laughs> There you go. Uh-huh. Uh. Can you tell I love what I do? Oh, so, yeah. Well, that's the way it's supposed I, to be. I love metal detecting more than, than eating or sleep, sleeping. Well, I like to sleep <laughs> and eat, but I do love it a lot. <laughs> We're right and, here with you. 
Yeah, and you know, you mentioned the podcast. I'm, I'm on, of course, I'm guesting with you guys on this. And I appreciate that. And straight from here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get in the car and run to the studio all the way across town for Relic Roundup in five minutes. <laughs> no, I actually oh, work man. from my office here. So hey, thank God for electronics. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, we are down to the wire here for you. I know you got to get off and, and jump on there, but um. We I have really are, enjoyed it, though. We have so enjoyed having you on here. Thanks again. Uh, next week, uh, we plan to have, I know, someone that fam- you're familiar with is Peter uh, Chattel, So. Uh, oh, he's with a magazine, too. This must be American yeah. Digital Week. Hey. Right? <laughs> I have, hey, I got folks, to remember, if, if we make good guests, you can only imagine how good the magazine must be. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it. And we love did it. have a request for the magazine. If you can make the Just Doug section waterproof, because apparently the drool that people are drooling Oh, oh the drool on the page, yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. um, we didn't touch on Just Doug. I, I want to do that real quick. My co-host can wait on me. It's okay. It's my show. So uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, the Just Doug section of the magazine is Recent finds that have been made within the past six months or so. Um, there's about 12 pages of them you'll see in the magazine. And hey, it's one thing to post your picture on the internet and it get covered up with a bunch of other posts and all. But if you really want to feel special, send your picture to American Digger and get it put in print. You can frame it on your wall and have something to hand down to the grandkids. So. Anything you find, and we're not just Civil War, we're everything. We're anything, even I say anything old, but we even put jewelry in the magazine, so it doesn't have to be that old. <laughs> well, but one, one other thing we didn't touch upon, where can the listeners find you on different social media platforms? Oh, well, um, we're all over Facebook. Uh, I've got my personal page, Butch Holcomb, which, you know, if you want to contact me there, you can. We have an American Digger magazine page, which has, I believe, about 14,000 followers now, something like that. We have an American Digger Can You Identify page, which is a great place to post your stuff and let us identify it. We have an American Digger Reader's Finds page, which anything you just want to show off, it doesn't matter if it's a recent find or something from way back, uh, we have. <laughs> we also have American Digger events on Facebook. I tell you what, look up American Digger on Facebook, and you're going to see a whole bunch of hits, and most of them are us. If you don't think it's us, get in touch with us. Sounds good. And awesome. Twitter. We're on Twitter, too, of course. We're twits. <laughs> awesome. Uh, well, has this been fun or what? Well, yes. Uh, we'll have to have you on again sometime in the future. I would love it, and I really and, appreciate it. Well, thank you. Thanks for joining us, and we'll let you uh, go so you can jump on your podcast. But thanks again. We we had fun. Uh, but well, I'm gonna go to I'm gonna go to my podcast. And I'm gonna tell them I'm too hoarse from this, and I just have to sit back and listen. <laughs> there you that's go. Me, okay. That's how I like me get the night off. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you so much for having me. All right. Thanks again. We appreciate it, Butch. All right. Thank you. You have a great night. He's a great guy. Yeah, that was good. So. Thank you all for listening. And I know a lot of you are wanting to hop on over there and listen to them tonight. Uh, so uh, if you're if you're ready, uh, okay. yeah, let's uh, let's give it a go and and uh, have everyone jump on over to uh, to his podcast. Okay, sounds great. Well, thank you all for listening tonight. You all have a wonderful night and stay safe. Uh, through all this crazy time and uh we'll we'll see you on the next all right good night all good night all <laughs>